this is Pastor Elizabeth Jager from St. Lutheran Church in Sheboygan Falls. Welcome to our worship. We're posting a bit late today um, because of the 4th of July weekend. Laura's taking a little break and I hope she's having a good time. I want to say thanks to my husband, John, who is recording today. Just a couple announcements. Um, our Worship in the Garden series, for those of you who want to come to in-person worship, um, continues on Wednesday, July 15th at 6.30. Um, following that, we will be having our in-person semi-annual meeting of the congregation. So um, if you'd like to come and um, share your votes and your voice, please come, all the new members out there who are watching. Also, um, we are planning our special graduation service um, for August 2nd at 9.30 a.m. And then that weather committee will be in the worship garden. Um, we've been continuing to have our services out in the worship garden Sunday mornings at 9.30. Um, you need to wear masks and you need to bring your own chairs and be social distance. But we've um, really had a good um, weather for it and it's been going well these past couple of weeks. Now I'd like to continue with our reading for today, which comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Just a note about St. Paul, for those of you who might be tuning in, he's not one of the original 12 disciples. Paul was sort of a, a Pharisee, like the ones who were opposed to Jesus during his life. And he was out persecuting Christians until he had a vision of Jesus on the road to Damascus, and that changed everything. And that's when Paul became um, one of the most famous followers of Jesus, um, the, one of the most famous disciples of all. And he wrote a good share of the New Testament as letters to various churches. So today's lesson comes from Romans, the seventh chapter. St. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do what I do not want. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us turn to God in prayer. Lord, set us free from our baser instincts and passions and make us willing captives to your law of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now today I'd like to start off with a heartwarming and adorable story from when I was a child. One of my friends had this cool ring and I wanted it really, really badly. It was red plastic, and it had a little devil on it that said, the devil made me do it. Now, I couldn't just go and buy one of these rings because she had gotten it in one of those vending machines that you see in grocery stores that have little toys in them. And so I couldn't count on putting my quarter in and getting the exact same ring. So I really wanted it and I went back and forth in my head. Should I or shouldn't I take it? Should I or shouldn't I? And I honestly can't remember if I took it or not, but I think I remember that I got in trouble. So I think I took it. But I, what I really remember is the struggle that I had. Now today's words from the Apostle Paul addressed to the church at Rome are a reflection on that kind of a struggle that human beings go through when they struggle against sin and evil in their lives. It's what it means to be a disciple in a sinful world. Martin Luther spoke of it as being saint and 
and sinner at the same time. I'd like to invite you to pause and think for a moment. When have you experienced this inner struggle between doing the good you want to do and doing the evil that you don't want to do? Often, we notice it in kids, but it also plays out in adult behaviors like alcoholism, gambling, and also the ongoing quest to get what we want and progress to where we want to, to get we, what we deserve in life or what we think we deserve in life, no matter what it costs other people. Now, do you think that as you have grown older, matured in faith, that this struggle has disappeared or gone away? Is it easier for you to live a Christ-like life the longer you have lived? Let's look at Paul. Now, he's grown in his faith to the point where he is the spiritual advisor and pastor to others. This letter to the Romans is one among many, many letters Paul wrote to Christians to guide them in their faith. And yet, this struggle continues to be his struggle too. He cries out in anguish, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Can you relate to that? Have you ever felt like you cannot possibly fight against the temptations that surround you day after day, that it gets harder and harder sometimes? If so, you are in good company. It is the common experience of every Christian, saint and sinner. Does that mean we should simply throw up our hands and give up to our baser instincts? That there is no hope to hold on to? Certainly not. I think it helps that as we continue to grow in our faith, it becomes easier to discern these struggles. And with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we can stand up against those struggles within ourselves. One of the marks of a mature Christian is the awareness of this struggle with evil in your life. One of the marks of a mature Christian is this honest awareness about who we are, honest about the civil war that goes on inside of us. It is to struggle with evil until our dying day. We all struggle. We all say to ourselves, oh, wretched person that I am. In the words of Martin Luther in the small catechism, his explanation to the third article of the creed points this out so clearly. I believe that I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with its gifts, and made me holy and kept me in the true faith, and keeps me with Jesus in the one common church. Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins, mine and that of all believers. On the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and will give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. We cannot battle the sin that dwells within us alone, but God provides for us a counselor, an advocate in the Holy Spirit to show us the way. The longer I live in faith, the longer I realize that we can't make this journey alone, the more and more we need to lean on the Holy Spirit and listen to its voice through the study of God's Word, the support of other believers, and trust in the unique inner gifts that the Holy Spirit has endowed each of us with. The power of the Holy Spirit comes into your life and gives you strength. The Holy Spirit who helps you get over your alcoholism, your drug addiction. The Holy Spirit who helps you get control of those destructive behaviors that are hurting your family, your marriage, yourself, and hurting others in so many different ways. The Holy Spirit comes into you and strengthens you and helps you to do what is right. The Holy Spirit forgiving you through the death of Christ on the cross. So when you find yourself struggling against sin, remember, you're not the only one, that God in Christ through the Holy Spirit has made you, yes, you, a saint. 
and will guide you to follow God's ways and to know the way to go. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening and stay healthy and safe until we meet again. God bless.